Good evening. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session for May the 26, 2021. How do I have a motion to? Yes, uh, pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move the board to meet in a closed session to consider matters that relate to negotiations and to perform an administrative function. Second. I have a space second. Any discussion? All those in favor by say aye. 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 Ayes have it for Thank you. We'll be back at 5 o'clock. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education from May to 26, 21. Can we have open uh, things and pledge allegiance? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, you've had a chance to look at the minutes for May the 9th, both open and closed. Has everybody had a chance to review those? Yes. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve uh, open and closed meeting minutes for May 19th, 2021. Second. I have a, for, a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Passes. Okay. Uh, make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, Jane, you're on budget workshop. Good afternoon. What we'd like to bring before you is draft scenario number 12 to review. Since we met the last time, we have um, the county certified maintenance of effort number from the state. The state is number from county maintenance of effort is 62,559,389. This has been, um, the certification has been sent over to the county to review too as well. And I think we've been in agreement with the county that if those, when those numbers came in and they're certified and looked at, then they would agree to that number. Right, correct. So the, the change is using that three-year average, so using the 17, 18, and 19's number as far as enrollment. So updating that, if we look at scenario 12, we're um, still in a deficit of 1,085,581 to bridge the gap there. And this is um, looking at um, a placeholder for salaries listed there. So we're in, in this scenario, we're still a million eighty-five short. Yes. The, the balance is budget. You, you currently using a fund balance of 330. Yes. And Tammy's brought up the concern about uh, other state, other sources, not public placements and uh, increases Excuse of 450. The tuition and building use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 440. Nick, I still had a question about the furlough date. You said that that was take, put back in? We have to add that back into 22. Right, but so, I was thinking that, that um, Dick, you had said that it had been Last year, to balance our budget, we did a furlough day. Right. Took one day away from everybody. They physically, or financially, they didn't, they did not lose that because they were in training for schoology, I think it was. We paid them for training for a day and paid them from a grant. From a grant. So the teachers and staff did not lose that money last year, but it was out of our budget. Through a, it was grant funded for one day. That means we have to put it back in this year to make it for 189, I think, is our agreement? Uh, 270. 270 to bring it back. No, Bob, I'm talking about, uh -huh. we have 180 days in school and nine professional days to get to 189. You know, if, not, if we didn't put it back, we'd be at 188. So the, the, the staff did not lose money last year because of the grant, and uh, but we've got to get it back in. So, you know, it's, it's we robbed Peter to pay Paul last year, and now we're paying it back this year. It's got to be put back in. Or, you know, we do another furlough day this year or two, we'd save that much money, but then you're that much behind next year. Okay, thank you. Okay. So um, this evening, I, I believe we were gonna look at the five-year expenditures. Could I ask real quick, do we have a revision on the um, budget requests from the schools and the departments? Do we have an updated version of that or is it the 253 is? The, the 253, um, 
We don't have an updated on request. The initial request was 806,000, 835, and then it was um, reduced down to 253, 253, 160. Okay. But that's what you approved. Okay. And out of that um, amount, the 253,160, it's 20,000 for an assistant at Centerville Elementary, 85,000 for a gateway teacher at Sellersville Middle, 85,000 for the drug and alcohol pre prevention instructor, a PD for grades four and five math at 5,160, licenses for Adobe and the cloud for CTE, 15,000, licenses for discovery, and tech book at 17,000. They're shredding in all buildings those containers to have a professional company come in at 6,000. A travel tracker and athletic trips for students to track the students at 8,000. And then the annual support increases for all our technology contracts at 12,000. That's on page one in our budget book. Right, right. It might be something we have to look at. Mm -hmm. I would, yes, I would like to look at a few of those. Okay. One item I'd like to bring to your attention, if we look at the five-year comparison and we go to page three, just, just a thought. If we look at line 1807, the budget amount for tutoring is 156500 Are you on the page three of our five-year comparison? Mm -hmm. Correct, for expenditures. So we have 156,500 there for tutoring. What's coming down for the blueprint fund is gonna be an additional 599,000 for tutoring. So was wondering if this was a cost savings, but um, with the idea or the understanding that within a couple of years, this would have to be added back in, but it could be a savings that we could recognize now. The 151? Uh, 156, um, the budgeted amount, because it's been averaging 151, yes. And we, we do have TSI money too in addition to that, and that is actually tutoring for kindergarten through second grade as well, and I think 133,000. So you're suggesting that this would come from? That this will come from blueprint funds? Mm -hmm. Okay. Restricted funds? And how much are they? It, for the supplemental tutoring, it's around 599,000, and for TSI, it's around 133,000. Uh, can that be used over more than one year? Uh, correct, uh, up to two years. Mm -hmm. So that would, that would buy us two years. Correct. And that would be not enough money in that to cover that for two years, and then we'd have a shortfall in two years. And then we're hearing about additional money that can come down for tutoring too from the state, but we're waiting to receive that award too. So that'd be 156. It's a thought there on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, we're looking at a, what, million dollar deficit? Since, the retirement savings, initially we had nine, and speaking with Ms. Bass, it went up to 16, so we'll re realize some savings there, depending upon where they fall on the scale. So how much do you think that could add up to, just a rough? Um, I, I would say conservatively around 40,000. Adding 40,000 to this number here? So we're gonna, uh, correct. I'm, I'm figuring we got 156 saving on tutoring, 40 mm -hmm. there. We're now at 196. And then a reminder: the reduction in two positions that you see under this um, on the right-hand side of the scenario number 12. This includes the reduction of the communication specialist as well as um, the maintenance coordinator position. Maintenance coordinator, that's in Carla's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a retiree a couple years ago that the position was never filled. We had a maintenance coordinator and we have facilities coordinator. There was two separate. And at one time, Carla was the, excuse me, Ms. Pullen was the facilities coordinator 
We never replaced Tony Schultz. Correct. So that would be removing. Tony so that's Schultz. two different positions. Correct. So maintenance coordinator and the facilities coordinator are two different positions. So we still have a facilities coordinator. Correct. This would be okay. removing the retiree position. Okay. Yes. But that's already in the budget. That's the savings of. Uh, it's incorporating at three hundred twelve thousand. And what you're telling us now is that that could go up forty thousand by a little bit few more retirements. Because of the retirements, correct. And with the on the left hand side, going back to the state aid number, the state aid draft figures are still draft; they're not final. We're anticipating another hundred thousand increase at minimum. Increase. That's a thirty-two million six hundred. Correct. State aid could go. I'm sorry. I State aid could go up about a hundred thousand. That I believe is all the changes that I had on my radar. Do you have anything you'd like me to review or, or go over? Um, do we go over this, Dr. Kane? I think it's important to do that um, just so that board members can see that there is a plan for uh, the rest of the dollars okay. that need to, to, to bridge the gap. Okay. That's a sheet. <clears throat> yes, correct. So in, in, in front of you is a schedule of estimated revenue expenses and encumbrances. It's taking what is budgeted for fiscal year 21, comparing it to actual projecting out additional expenditures and revenue and seeing if there's any variances. The top section is gonna be your projected revenue, the four major funding sources, Queen Anne's County government, the state of Maryland, the uh, federal government and then other resources. As you can see, we're on track for the first couple items. The ones that we are seeing a deficit of in revenue is other resources or other sources of 485,000. And underneath, under notes, you can see that the deficit is going to be from the fund balance of we would not need the 200,000 that was budgeted. So we go ahead and remove that the retiree drug subsidiary it came in and the budget amount was 135,000 it came in uh, at 85 so we have a 60,000 loss in revenue we have to account for the building use fees we see a decrease projected at 170 tuition a decrease of 15,000 and then other resources there that make up the the negative variance in revenue so a, a decrease in what we're anticipating to receive in revenue the next section is your major categories that you have, the current budget amount, expenditures to date, projected expenditures, May through June, and then your total projected, adding your year to date plus projected to give a variance. This is very conservative estimate. It's assuming that uh, um, a lot of these balances will be spent out by end of the year. What we're noticing currently is savings under instructional salary of uh, 455,000. We're seeing savings under special ed at 180 pupil personnel at 25, health services at 10, transportation at 90, operations at 125, maintenance at 90, and then your fixed charges at 575. So here, the projected variances, we're seeing a decrease in expenditures, and this is due to COVID because um, the savings that we're seeing is definitely an anom anomaly. This has been a, a dif def no, difficult year or, or unprecedented year. So you were looking at savings about 1.5 from expenditures for this year. Oh, and you would anticipate that to go up next year, seeing if we go have a full school year. It, we, we won't see that huge correct. variances on your right. category, correct? Like we save an instructional salary, a lot of that substitutes. Correct, majority. And the information you sent me one time, you know, we've in 2016 spent 485,000 substitutes. In 2019, which was pre COVID, the last year was 569,000. I mean, that's in those years, it was 3.3, 3.3, and then last year from 18 to 19 was 9.9 percent increase in substitutes, which personally 
I think are probably underpaid. I mean, they aren't paid at a high level to teach being a student. Um, how do we lower our substitute? I mean, not, not to have a demand for substitutes. Any ways to outside the box that we could lower substitute? Not, I mean, we need them because we got to have somebody in the classroom, but it's certainly getting to be a major expense. Um, this might be a suggestion. I'm hearing other counties actually have substitutes assigned to the building, and that let's say you're allotted two substitutes, and that's what you have to make work. I don't know if you've heard it in other districts or not, Dr. Kane. I've, I've had that in each district that I've worked in, except here. So they're called permanent substitutes, and on days if there's ever not a need mm -hmm. for a substitute, then they have assigned duties. They have things that they need to do on a schedule. Permanent subs. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I was just looking at how much money we were spending last year divided by days and the, yeah, I'm using $15 an hour as an average. You could say higher or lower. Divided by days, 180 days. You know, we're, we're hiring 35 substitutes a day. And if we had 13. Yeah, right, at least. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I mean I'm, you got 700 almost teachers, right. so that's so, not that's not outrageous. No, but I, mean, I was trying to, you know, but I mean, when you start, you know, that 569,000 covers 35 subs a day, to me, if you had permanent subs, I, I kind of like that idea because they'd have, and then they'd have to just make it work. Or well, I can remember well, Bernie Sadusky uh, years and years ago going crazy because the sub he couldn't believe how many substitutes we have, and that was a long time ago. So it's only in, in, you know increased over the years. Mm -hmm. Well, and and you probably aren't going to do a whole lot of saving mm -hmm. because those permanent subs have benefits, yeah. and you're paying them every day, and, and it certainly won't be. 35 over the 14 schools that you have. No. no, no, you wouldn't have that many every day, but. In the other districts, did they control, um, if they needed more, Dr. Kane, were they able to call in more, or how, did, how does that work? You still had to use the subsystem, because if I've got four permanent subs at my school and six people are out, I still have to use the subsystem. I don't know if that's the place where I'd be looking for savings because I would like to propose that we pay our subs more. Um, we're going to have them. Uh, they play in a very important role. Every time we um, have gone to a school for our tour, um, without exception, they reference that they need subs. Um, and certainly, you know, we've heard from uh, parents whose kids at the high school are sitting in the cafeteria because, or the gym because they don't have a sub. Um, so they're not even getting any academics. So I don't know if that's a place where I'd be looking for savings. I would like to increase well, their, I'm, their I, hourly. I'm looking at not having to have as much requirements as subs. I mean, and I know when you have 600 or 700 teachers, people are out certain days. But, um, you know, you're not getting the same quality when the teacher's out. And I just don't, and then I guess it's a profession. We're probably no better or worse than anybody else. But, right. you know, when you're not there, the students are missing out on their teacher. This is true, however, I do want to clarify one thing just for the public that's listening. For students who are in the auditorium or the cafeteria at um, some schools uh, because their teacher is at home and they're learning virtual, mm -hmm. they're not in the cafeteria or auditor auditorium doing nothing. They are getting instruction and there are staff assigned to those areas to ensure that students are working. It's not certainly not the same as if the teacher were there, but they're not doing nothing. No, and it, it, this is unprecedented year. I mean, so I mean, I can't judge things. It's just that when I look at a trend, and you know, I know it's tough to find subs. Um, it's like bus drivers who, who, you know, somebody wants to work three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, it ties your whole day up. So, you know, you probably your substitute because you don't want to commit to certain things. You want to have more freedom, but. You know, it just seems our trend is going up substantially. So basically, you're telling us the savings this year might be a million five, rough. Um, a million and sixty-five thousand. Right. Correct. But that's this year with that's a lot of the, and with, with some of the big items. Uh, uh, Right. Certainly going to change with when we're we're 100 percent back in school next year. Correct, correct. The, this is very conservative estimate. More than likely, it'll go up. It's assuming that um, some funds are going to be completely spent out mm -hmm. as well. Right. Okay. Any 
think other board members have any questions or do you have more to go with us? I mean, questions just about the budget in general? Well, or? I mean, we are far off on balancing our budget with our revenues and expenditures right now. But do you want to talk about the, the summary box? Did I miss oh, oh, correct. So on the left-hand side, you can see our unrestricted fund balance. So your unrestricted fund balance is a fund balance that uh, is carried forward, that is able to be assigned. So we came into fiscal year 21 with a little over 2.3 million. With the projected revenue variance of a decrease, we have to take that into consideration of 485,000 less revenue received. We have a positive expenditure variance of 1.5. So uh, for this year only for 21, we're projected to see an increase in fund balance of a little over a million. If we take out the proposed fund balance that's in scenario 12 of 330, we're looking at fund balance projection at the end of 21, a little over 3 million. You know, and, and I, I, some people look at this like, okay, you have $3 million balance. Why don't you spend it? The problem is it's a non reincurring expenditure. You know, it's a reoccurring expenditure, but not reoccurring revenue. Um, and certainly that can be something we looked at because I think we're looking at 330 already. But, you know, as we've talked about before, this is a, it is a slippery slope that we've gone down over the last few years and it's got to be done with great caution. I don't know if it's going to take a, a line item going through or not, but I was really interested in bringing these subs up to $16. Um, and I know that you worked up the numbers, and I appreciate it very much from you and Dr. Kane, which was going to, we were going to need to find $100,000. But you're talking that you, I know you said that it's not the same quality, but you have some subs who have your bachelor's and master's, and if they're not, if, is this accurate? If they're not certificated, they're still getting a low hourly amount. Is that correct, Mrs. Based Best? On education that's okay, so what are your bachelor's with no certification? What are they making your subs? We, I think we said that to you. But you I'll did, I'm sorry. Again. Just No, 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 I've got it. I just didn't know if you knew offhand. Okay, I can look it up too, but, and I wanted to just find that 100,000, 99,000 and some change to bring our subs up. I mean, you have many of them only making the 1175, I think it was, um, per hour, and they have to have at least an associate's. Um, and they're obviously very vital. I mean, every single school we're going to is talking about the importance of their pairs, their subs, um, these ones who are helping their teachers. That adds to the budget. Not that it's not a good reason, but it does add to the budget. Right. If, if we take into consideration those cost savings and the additional 100000 um, instead of the one million eighty-five thousand five eighty-one, you're looking at around seven hundred ninety. Then that we have to. Dress to balance. Mm. So we're pretty on. It's okay. <laughs> As far as revenues, with the county and the state, that's pretty much not in stone, but all the numbers are there. You said there might be a little bit of more money coming from state aid. You think that could be a hundred thousand? Correct. But there's not. That's. And there's there's S or two money. We'll probably have maybe a million dollars left over after. It, it will have a, summer school comes out, this SR2 I'm talking about. We have, we have what, I mean, I'm hearing numbers floating around here. About a, a million assigned to summer school, but I can get you that that, uh -huh. that amount. But we've also spent some of it for some other things too. Actually, it was just for the math workbooks and things like that. It's, it's been put on hold currently, but um, it, 
there is um, allocation that the state approved for to for to spend those funds on, but so there's we need to reallocate and do a budget amendment. Right. So the st state approved us to spend all of the dollars. So there were no dollars left. PPE, but we have summer spend. school, mm -hmm. all of those kinds of things. But we have not. We put a hold on it until you all felt comfortable. So that's why we are, you know, sort of in this predicament where we really, really, really need to get moving. When do extra two funds have to be spent by? The 23? 23. 23. So that's two, September 23? Is it, is it? Um, I think it's ju it, July. The school year usually is July. So we can spend it in next year, but that's it. One more year or two more years. One more, One more year. year. Mm -hmm. So as the funds. And then there's an extension for a year if we don't spend exactly. it all. It'll go to the end of 23. Or till July 1 of 23. So if we could find out where some of this extra money could be used. Right, and, and th that would be the key. We would have to definitely be able to tie it to um, continuing services related to COVID that it, if we were, we saw a decrease in enrollment due to COVID that these people, um, a potentially 790,000 could be a reduction in force and ESRA 2 could support that since it's a reduction in force. So if we could justify that and have it go through, we would have two years to use, I mean, with an extension, that could be keep us whole for two years before we the bucket would drop out of us again. And, and then, don't forget you have SR3 coming right behind us. Yeah, but same purpose. Understand. And one thing that I do want to mention too would be with, with the ESSER dollars, you're hearing more and more and I mentioned it about um, a blueprint coordinator and it would, or implementation person. So it would be someone that would work jointly with the county and the school system. It could either be a county employee or a school system employee that there's a solid plan in place we talked about strategically, maybe even thinking about a committee for the ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 as far as what are our strategic goals, how do they align with the process, and this position that we're required to have or by July 1 would help in facilitating that, and a lot of it would be the programmatic piece of it. Is that your understanding? Dr. That is exactly my understanding. In addition to that, the monitoring, because there's a pretty complicated monitoring piece that is going to come along with all of these federal. So that would be dollars. paid out of escrow money. Could be paid out of that money. Yeah, it could. And it would be somebody that could coordinate it and make sure that it's being spent according to what the law requires. Right, and it, more so like programmatically in, in, in line with our goals and where we see ourselves in the next couple of years, as far as what do we identify as the needs of the district and how are we gonna get there and what are the measurements to, to get us there? Well, I'm just been sitting here plugging the numbers in, just um, with that extra 100,000 we talked about, we were down to uh, a deficit of 85, 581 with just the scenario we have here in number th and number 12. You're talking about the extra 156 going over to blueprint funds, possibly. That would take care of the 85,000 that we're short and we could do what's on this paper. Am I making it too simple? I mean, I, to me, I, it did I like simplify it too much, or did I? <laughs> or maybe I'm maybe I'm just grasping at straws. You mean with the ESSER dollars? If we if we take the tutoring, we, we, the tutoring at 156 to the blueprint funds, it's a grant, correct? Correct. You just said there was an extra hundred thousand dollars in the state aid. Correct. Taking all that money, I'm just gonna you know pray for 440 thousand in building use. We're at 85 thousand. In the, in the deficit, that 156 wipes that out, do it, leaving this as is. I the two positions, the retirement savings. I think we'll still be 7,800,000 short. Uh, I'll check the numbers again. I just, just, I just did it really quick um, with just whatever we just talked about just now. And I, maybe I'm oversimplifying it. No, no, so um, what I did is I, I took the one million eighty-five thousand five eighty-one, the deficit, and I subtracted out the hundred and fifty-six, the forty, and then the hundred. So that still is a seven. So you have still done. You've already taken that out, and that's what this is. Uh, no, it takes us to a new total of seven hundred eighty-nine thousand five eighty-one. 
Okay, because that's not reflected on here. That's why I guess I was being oh, too simple. It, right, I was, um, okay. We identified more savings this week, we were thinking. So instead of that 1085581 it takes it down to um, 789581 How comfortable, do you, and I know you can't answer that right now, do you feel that number, Esther can fill that gap in pretty heavily? I mean, not just that, you know, through the whole thing of using, you know, reduction of force and things of that nature. Do you think that Esther could do 500 to 700,000 of that? I, my hesitation would be is what would our long-term goals be and would it include just um, supporting salaries and would it would there be other needs in the in the school and would that be more of something that the committee should identify and maybe use some of the current fund balance that we have maybe a mixture of the two mm -hmm. ESSER and fund balance or all of ESSER but that would be a decision of what the committee would, would want and what they see for the school system. I mean, the, the, using either fund balance or ESSER money, to me, is one-time money that's digging ourselves a hole. I mean, I'm just trying to look at how, and you know, we've, we've done this in the past. Um, and we do have open positions. I'm not sure how many, Ms. Bass could speak to how many open positions we have. Yes, I do, I'll be right back. Last year we were 34 open positions that are vacant at this point. But some of them are classroom teachers. All of these are classroom teachers. Or special educators. Or, or special educators, yes. But they all provide instruction. So that, that is either going to reduce programs or increase class. and increase class size. Yes, absolutely. That's why I, I, I think I mentioned an email to some of you that we may have to look at the budgeted requests, mm -hmm. that we may have to revise that 253,000 if we're already 785 at this point. 785. 789. Okay. But when you say we have that number, when you say 30 some? 34. 34. That's out for, I mean, you're interviewing some of those people now, aren't you? Absolutely. And at some point, you got to pull the trigger on it because if you don't pull the trigger soon, you might not get them. I pull the trigger, tw I give them 24 hours. They have a conversation and get back to me. Usually the principals have the batter's box, so they have the next up. So, the, 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 it's, I mean, you say we have 32 open positions, but there are 32 that are needed to be filled. 34, I'm sorry. 34. Needing to be filled. So that to me doesn't look like a. Either retirements or people going mm -hmm. to other districts or deciding not to do this work any longer. And to me, that's not a, a personally a good option because those are people we need in, on our in our in our system. And you know, we lost 19 last year, and we're losing two this year in this proposed budget. Mm -hmm. Well, those two we are not. About Sorry, they're not classroom they're not teachers. Teaching. They're not teaching, but I mean, you know, everybody has is doing a job. Or and if when somebody doesn't do their job, somebody else has to fill in to do it. So it's, you know, it's going somewhere. So, so I think that what Mrs. Towers is trying to um, explain is that there really is um, an opportunity here for us to probably combine the use of some fund balance and the use of some ESSER. We have to certainly justify it, but avoiding layoffs is one of the justifiable, one of the allowable reasons that we could use this money. And um, Ms. Harper, out of that 253,160, maybe go up back to the person who requested and see if they can, we could come up with another option. So I'm always interested in looking at the impact, right, on schools of not just losing a person, but losing the position. And in some of these cases, as the negotiated agreement is written, because it requires for us to look at teachers who are not tenured, so we look at their tenure in the county, not just in their school, but in the county, and whether or not they have an APC, an advanced professional certificate. Some of the teachers 
that would fall into a category to be that position to be reduced may be the only teacher that teaches that particular content area. And so if we have to cut that position, then we are cutting programs. Mm -hmm. And what we're proposing is that we not do that at all and still allow that 253,000 that you've already approved, but use fund balance and ESSER funds to bridge the gap. Everybody stays where they are and we use the resources that are available to us to keep things as they are. And the way I see it, the way this year has gone, our students need this. We can't afford to be without teachers, lose programs, and close the gap on what they've lost this year. I, 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 you won't get an argument out of me on that. You know, it's just what we've proposed as this budget. Uh, we all got to make sure, and we're all going to be here next year, mm -hmm. that uh, you know this is going to be a, a ongoing problem. Yep. You know, it's not like you know it's because it's, everything increases and everybody wants more pay and everybody wants to move on, but um, you know we're, we're we're you know we're taking resources from one-time places that aren't getting renewed, even though ESSER money is good for a couple of years. Our fund balance we could maybe hopefully improve every year, but it it, it comes to an end. You know, any well goes dry. But what I suggest is, can you know look at this ESSER thing and really find out what money can be used there and how you can implement that into uh, that program. With, we've got our, a better fund balance than we did last year, but I think we're in a, we all must agree that's a different year to get that fund balance. Some of these things are, are I don't anticipate doing next year, and I think we should schedule a meeting on 9th of June for another budget hearing to wrap this up. Because we, you know, we got to balance it. We got to have a budget by the end of the school year. That's my take. Any other members? Do we have a proposal to look at with the mixture of the two tonight? No. 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 Um, that's but we know what the gap is. Yeah. We know the gap is about seven, eight hundred thousand, and we're able to make that work between fund balance and ESSER dollars. Would there be a preference 50-50 or all in one or? I, I'd like to see 50-50. Especially if it means we don't have to go through this and chop things we desperately need already because mm -hmm. previous years we keep right. chopping it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, one thing we do 50, that's fine. If, I'm just going to pick a round number of 400,000 of each. That will then up our fund balance use this year for to 730,000 because we're already we're into it for 330. So, Ms. Ms. Um, Towers, would you explain how, because we have netted really a savings of over a million dollars, yes, that 330 comes off, mm -hmm. but it's not like we are digging for something. It's already there because the fund balance is. Oh, I understand. We've we had, increased we, our fund balance over the last four years. We have, and it's there. But it just, I just, in my mind, using fund balances to pay a recurring cost on an operating budget to me is not good practice. It absolutely is not, that, and that, I think that, this district has been doing it for a, a long, and you and long time. You and I talked about yeah. that degree when you came here. Um, you were shocked that that was. I I'd was never going heard on. of such a thing. <laughs> so, but I can't know. remember ever a year where we've ever gotten enough money right off the bat to do what we need to do, ever. Because you are living in a wealthy county that does not put an equitable amount into the school system. Well, it's the greatest amount because you're the greatest, you're the biggest employer. But the value for education in terms of funding has to be there. If it were, you would not, because you're in a wealthy county, it, you, it wouldn't be this. Well, we're if in a wealthy. If you get the minimum every year, this is what happens. Well, they, I take some offense. I, I find that county d does a lot for the school system. We have a good system. Uh, they, they put a lot of money into it. They put a lot more money in than most counties only because they're wealthier. But, you know, there, there comes a point how much anybody can afford. <laughs> and, um, you know, we don't, we don't set the tax rate. And... Um, um, Mr. Smith, if you watched the budget meeting where Dr. Kane was and I were the only two people that spoke to the county commissioners, the school system used to be 51% of the budget. 
it is now 40% in this this current proposed budget, 40%. That is a huge decrease. It is, but they also- and you can't you can't defend it. You, you can't, can't, the numbers you, don't you, lie. The, the numbers don't lie. That's what they're paying us, but I can defend it. There's other th things they have to provide oh, with this I, county. There's no doubt. Uh, Deny that. Department of Emergency Services, it. this county's getting older. There's there's a different requirement and I, different priorities I, I, that, that I, I'm uh, these gentlemen I'm not asking you to defend any of it, sir. I'm just stating fact. And it's it's a fact. But as the school board and the superintendent, our priority is advocating for our employees. And that's what we have to do. And this school system has always done an excellent job with what we've got. But that can't continue if you keep chopping away and chopping away and chopping away. Eventually, and very soon, our rates are going to start dropping. They are. Yeah. I think it's our job to make this thing work. So if you, you have a some kind of plan, the fund balance combination, fund balance, ESSER money, um, I would recommend we get those proposals in front of us so we can possibly do a budget. I mean, we've got June the 9th and we got June the 16th, so uh, we got two other meetings, but I think we definitely should schedule a budget heater for the 9th to move us up. So, you know, if we need anything, we're not going to be, I don't want to be at the last minute saying we got to do something and not make sure we're all on the same page. If everybody can agree to that. Sure. Well, last year, remember, we uh, we were here several nights, long nights, and we had three different scenarios Multiple up on the scenarios. on the board, and we and we worked it out. I mean, it. Well, I think I think we it, had to do. We had to do. As soon as Jane can get us this information, we can look at it. We got the way to get back to both anybody that wants to contact through our system as far as questions, and uh, you know, we can get back. But we, you know, but to me, it looks like you know, we're looking at about eight hundred thousand in that neighborhood uh, to come up with a, a, additional revenue if we're going to keep our uh, system the same as it is right now, or what we're proposing. Balance, yes. So what I can do is provide you the SR2 proposal, the updated amount showing that 400000 mm -hmm. decrease. And I'd like to see also, I'm looking at more than one year, too because you know what we do this year is gonna affect next year because when we start taking one-time money, we gotta make sure I want to plan to work at least two or three years, hopefully. I only go so far out, but I wanna make sure we have enough, you know, to make sure this works for a couple of years. And you're also going to show us where the summer school salaries come out of the- Yes, yeah, so we'll provide updated- um, Okay, thank you. And the novels and the, yes, the workbooks. Yes. Okay, thank you. And I thought each month going forward, I in addition to the revenue and expenditure reports, that I'll have an ESSER report then there too as well to review each month going forward. That's helpful. Okay. Okay, is there any other questions for Jane or Dr. Kane? Jane, you have anything else for us? Dr. Kane, you? Nope. Nope. Any board members? No, other than the substitutes. I'm not sure if we can add that the funds into it if we're even interested in doing that. Um, and June 9th won't work for me, but I'm certainly, I can give my opinion, my. Um. Okay, hearing nothing, uh, this could end this budget workshop. We do have our regular school board meeting on June the 2nd uh, of this next month. We will schedule a, another workshop on June the 9th budget, and we have our regular work session on June the 16th. Um, of June. Are there any other information the board would like to bring up for this evening's meeting? Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.